Hey guys, Alex from 7th Hour Films back again with Mobile Suit Gundam. Last time around, we watched, well, the first Mobile Suit Gundam movie. Uh, and yeah, we're watching the movies, uh, not the original series, just the edited, I guess, compilation movies. Uh, but it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, we were uh, given the story of Amaro, how he... Uh, basically stumbled into being uh, the Gundam pilot and the uh, the hero of the, uh, I guess the Earth Federation. Yeah, because the enemy is Zeon. So, uh, so yeah, he's the he's the hero. He's got the Gundam. He went through like four character arcs in one movie. It was actually amazing. Um, and yeah, we have uh, all of our very nice, cool, interesting characters. Uh, we also have uh, the enemies, We uh, most notably being Char, who uh, is an interesting character. He's kind of a, I guess, a sort of lower-ranking officer, but he, he seems to be climbing his way up. Uh, and he also had another buddy, uh, Garma, but he betrayed him and had him killed. So there's, there's some interesting stuff going on with Char, and I'm curious to see where that's going. So yeah. Um, and where we last left off at the end of the movie, I think the, uh, the prince or just the son of the duke was, uh, of the Zeons was giving this big speech and that was pretty much our leave off into, uh, into this movie. So yeah, we are watching Mobile Suit Gundam 2 Soldiers of Sorrow today. Um... So yeah, I'm excited for this. Uh, I've been meaning to get back to this. I don't know. Again, I have no idea when I'm releasing these reactions. Uh, I'm just, uh, again, what I want to do is like backlog a bunch of movie reactions and then just kind of put them out, you know, put them out on a sort of it'll be out when it's out kind of thing, you know. Um, ideally once a month, but I just can't stick to any schedule on these movie reactions. So they'll be out when they're out. I don't know how long it's been since I released Mobile Suit Gundam 1. It's been about a month since I recorded that video, uh, and just things have gotten in my way, so my whole plan of backlogging movie reactions hasn't gone to plan so far, but hopefully I can start really getting into that, and at the very least, I'm doing that here because we're doing Gundam 2 today. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, everything's pretty much going to be the same as last time, you know. We'll have the uh, the reaction highlight that you can go watch, uh, as well as the discussion here on YouTube. And then uh, there's also the full length over at my Patreon page. Uh, for reference, today I'm on Netflix, uh, because I actually, I looked it up, and I think they've already taken the Gundam movies off of YouTube. Like, I couldn't find them again. So, I don't know. I don't know if they're still on YouTube uh, for free or not, but I'm watching it on Netflix, and... Yeah, should all be good. So that is pretty much that. So why don't we go ahead and hop right into Mobile Suit Gundam 2 Soldiers of Sorrow. Here we go. Oh. oh, movie reactions are just a little tough, mainly just because of my own friggin' setup, because I'm sitting here at a table, hunched over for two hours. Uh, okay, interesting. Very, very, very interesting follow-up. This is 1981 now, alright. Um, okay. That was uh that, that that was good. That, that that was good, definitely. I mean, it's still the whole thing of you can definitely tell that this is, you know, however many episodes crammed into a movie because it's just like this is not I mean, I don't know, maybe I guess maybe back then, I don't know, but I feel like at least nowadays you would not cram so much into a movie, you know? 
But then again, I don't know. Like, I gotta think about, like... I gotta think about, like, movies now, or, like, maybe even anime movies now. Like, one of the more recent anime movies I reacted to on the channel was uh, Demon Slayer Mugen Train. And that, you know, is straight up just adapting uh, a bunch of, you know, a lot of the chapters from the manga. It's the Mugen Train arc in the manga. But I don't know. I, I feel like even that, like, while, yes, there was a lot that was going on in that movie... I don't know, this just feels like I just watched 20 episodes at once, you know? Which I gotta say, for being... Like, again, I don't know how many episodes are put into each movie, but however long it is, they can really pack it in to just two hours, basically. I mean, this is 2.13, the, the, the first one was 2.20, but the fact that these aren't, like, three-hour-long behemoths or something, like... That's pretty commendable, I must say. That is pretty commendable. Alrighty. So. Boy, oh boy, we got some interesting stuff in this one. Uh, I like how, and again, just, you know, thinking about how this would have worked in the, in the show. I'm thinking about, like, man, like, think about how long it was before we saw Char again. Who... Honestly, I kind of feel like is our main antagonist, you know? Uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like we just haven't gotten enough of, like, you know, the, 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 was it the zombie family uh, of Zeon? Like, I feel like we didn't get enough of them except for Garma. But Char definitely feels like more of a main villain, you know? So, cool, refreshing water. But yeah, I mean, even just in this movie to have it be like, I mean, okay. Here's the thing. I, I I know that this is... That Mobile Suit Gundam is basically like... Japanese Star Wars, basically. Which, ironic, because it pretty much came out around the same time, you know? Um, and we're gonna talk a bit about that when it comes to the new types uh, as well. But, I will say, like, that does sort of give us a... Like, that does sort of work with, like... Uh, with... Char being sort of a Darth Vader type, you know? Like, I kind of see that in, uh, in this, you know? But, I guess, see, where it's like, you know, there was, there was a lot of Char in the first movie, you know? And again, that's, you know, however many episodes in the original anime. But, to have such a break from him is really interesting. And then, getting him right there at the end and getting... You know, our rematch between uh, between him and Amaro. So, I don't know. It's just, like, that is really, really good. And I gotta say, like, yeah, if you want, like, something that I would say probably, in terms of just the original trilogy of Star Wars, something that kind of rivals that just from, you know, I, I guess just a different cultural perspective, uh, Gundam is definitely that. Like, this definitely feels like it was Japanese Star Wars. You know, and I say it's ironic that these came out around the same time, but I guess in all technicalities, Gundam came first. Because, you know, well, I mean, I guess I'd have to look it up specifically, because the first Star Wars came out in 77, but I don't know when the anime of this started. So, I'll look that up real quick. Okay. So it came out in 79. Okay, so... So yeah, so this... So Star Wars technically came first, and there's 43 episodes overall of... Uh, of Mobile Suit Gundam, which is interesting. So... Again, though, it just makes me curious, like... How far did these go, you know? Okay, so I just kind of, like, skipped ahead on the episodes. And I'm, I'm avoiding spoilers, but I just see here... Episode 27, it looks like. You have Kai develops a friendship with uh, Miharu. So yeah, around there, I guess. Damn, that's crazy. That is crazy. So, I mean, we still got a good chunk of the anime to go, obviously, because we still have the final movie. But, I mean, yeah, just the production of this alone is just so interesting. And honestly... See, I feel like it's something you can't get away with now. 
But I don't know how they did that. I honestly don't know. Because while, yes, you can kind of be like, you know, you can maybe spot where an episode would end or something. Like, it still feels like a movie, you know? Like, honestly, this is... Man, this is gonna be... This might be a weird reference. This is what Shyamalan tried to do with The Last Airbender. Condensing a 20-episode season of Avatar into one movie. And that alone didn't work. Just the condensing. A lot of other things in that movie didn't work. But this, maybe because this is, you know, this is all the original footage. You know, I'm sure there's new stuff like... There's some new animation here or there, some new, you know, voice lines and stuff like that. Um, but still, just the editing on this is just so interesting. So, so I can definitely see this being sort of Japanese Star Wars, basically. So, so yeah. So, stuff for this movie, this installment. Uh, okay. We gotta we gotta figure out what the hell this old new type thing was. So I'm going to I'm going to go back because I didn't I don't really think I understood this, and I'm going to okay. So it's about right here. It's about a half hour in, and I'm gonna see what the hell they were talking about because I feel like I missed something. New type was アムロにその兆しがあるんだったら、そんなものを待っていられるか。今アムロをガンダムから降ろして、ライト。奴の行動を認めたと。オッケー、ザラ。オッケー、ザラ。オッケー、ザラ。オッケー、ザラ。オッ
Okay. The 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 rest of the stuff this movie, uh, Raul, absolute awesome character. You know, I I really enjoy Shar as a villain, but I do see like yeah, he is sort of he, he's a villain. He's the Vader type, you know. Where I like how they, especially in this movie, they really humanized, uh, you know, the enemy, which I feel like, you know, when you when you talk about this being Japanese Star Wars, it's so very different from Star Wars, you know? It's like Star Wars in the fact that, alright, here's this, you know, sci-fi trilogy of movies, basically, that, you know, was one of the first ones to to kind of do it, you know, in terms of anime, like, especially with, uh, with Mecha and, um, and then, uh, the fact that this did have like such a cultural impact on Japan, uh, I know, I I know that you know in a similar vein to how Star Wars does with the United States, you know. So that in that regard, yes, it is very similar to Star Wars. But here, I mean, it, it's kind of the thing people say about Rogue One, where when Rogue One came out, everyone was saying, "Oh my gosh, this really shows." You know, people. This shows the war of Star Wars. You know, the gritty sort of part of the war, and to an extent, it does do that. But this definitely shows that, like, m- way more honestly. So, so I like this. Uh, I-, I really enjoyed this, where it's like it really does show. I mean, it's like we said, you know, with the last movie, it's like Amuro goes through like four character arcs. You know, and don't get me wrong that Luke Skywalker goes through character arcs too. He goes through his whole hero's journey. That's the point. But I haven't seen, but I didn't, I don't think Luke Skywalker did it in such rapid succession like in the last movie. Like it is crazy. And even in this one, he's still going through a lot, you know? So, so yeah, it's like that, that's a really interesting thing. Or, I mean, even, yeah, just humanizing the enemy. Like you get... You get some of that, but see, in the original trilogy, not really. Like, you get, you know, the Rebellion and and people like that. The most human person, honestly, is Darth Vader, because they have to humanize him. They have to redeem him at the end, you know? So, and here, here, while we do have Char, who is just sort of our main villain and he's he's very villainous you know he's like the humanity in him is not quite as pronounced like maybe we'll get some more of that because of this whole thing with Sela but i don't know which i'm hoping Sela doesn't turn you know i don't think she will but something's got to happen and obviously something i'm sure will happen in the next movie you know um but yeah but but then you have someone like Raul and uh, and Haman, who both of them very very human, grounded, down to earth characters. You know, the reason that uh, Raul wants to destroy White Base is so that he can, you know, he'll he'll avenge Garma's death and he'll get a double rank promotion, which will be good for him, her, and all of his men. You know, like he's not really doing it. You know, for the glory and stuff like that. I mean, he kind of is, but at the same time, he's doing it because it'll help all of the people that he's taking care of, you know? I, honestly, kind of reminds me of Roy Mustang in Full Metal Alchemist, you know? You know, the the, the people on top, the, the people who are on top always have to take care of the people below them, and so on and so forth, you know? So, it, it is sort of like that, where he's really looking at this like, I have to do this so that our lives, our circumstances are so much better. And I enjoy that. I really do. And I, I like, honestly, just that he's, you know... I mean, and it, it also makes sense because, unlike Shar, you know, he's he's much older, you know? And I enjoy that as well. Uh, it reminds me, there there's a moment in Season 1 of Mob Psycho where there's, like, all the henchmen and stuff, and, you know, the young henchmen are like, ah, we'll beat up, you know, these, these psychic kids... And the older henchman is like, no, 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 no. We don't need to do this. This is not going to help anything. 
we just need to stay here. Something will happen, but either way, we should not, you know, like, he's trying to take care of them. Like, we should not, you know, have that kind of risk, you know? Especially when there's no reward for doing it. Like, if we do that, we're going to get our asses kicked. Whereas here, Ryle is like, I need to do this because it will be good for my men, for my for my crew, basically. And for not only myself, but for Haman as well. So, uh, so that was good. I enjoyed that. And even just when, uh, you know, when he encounters Amaro, and and it's interesting now. Was it him? I guess it wasn't him at the beginning, uh, but there was some Zeon ship, and they or was it? No, was it Zeon? No, 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 no. No, it was Federation because the uniforms were different. That's right. Ugh. trying to remember everything again. You know, a lot happens in these movies, but um, but yeah, so. So yeah, uh, he didn't know who Amuro was, just that he was a soldier. And then it's only on the battlefield when he literally slices open the Gundam that he realizes it's him. But I like that that he's like, you yeah, know, I'm not, I'm, just, I'm gonna let you go, you know, take your girlfriend and go. But on the battlefield, I'm not going to be that, you know, forgiving. So, so that was interesting. And yeah, just the whole thing, you know. Uh, of the two of them, you're know, just taking an interest in Amaro as well. Like that was so interesting. So, um, and then yeah, they, they they honestly they died good deaths. They definitely died good deaths. Uh, and and it's interesting too that he also recognized Sela, but um, but yeah, but he went out he went out with an honorable death and just blew himself up. So. So that was good, and then uh, Haman trying to uh, trying to avenge him, but no. And then in the middle of all of that, uh, we had uh, Matilda and Ryu dying, which sucks. So, which that was an interesting thing, not only for Amuro, but then later to have that sort of mirrored by Kai that they both basically lost, you know, someone they truly cared about. Uh, in this war, you know, so, uh, so that was an interesting thing, but it, it gave them more determination to go on, you know, so I enjoyed that, um, and Ryu, again, going out like a hero, he crashed right into, I think he crashed into, into Haman, if I remember correctly, so, he went out like a hero as well, but, and, and I like how in this one, because I did, <sighs> Did anyone? I can't remember. I mean, Garma died in the last movie, but I can't remember if anyone on our team died in the last movie, you know? So, I I can't remember, unfortunately. So, the, again, it's one of those things, it's like, it's not just, it's not just that I can't remember. It's that so many things have happened in these movies that I'm trying to, like, you know, piece it all together. So, uh, so yeah, so that was all good. Um, and then, yeah, we had the whole thing with the new types, which Sela might also be a new type. Okay, I, I guess they kind of leave this ambiguous, but the whole thing where after, uh, Mira's death, where, you know, it is basically, you know, Kai kind of sees this vision of her, that, that said to me that he was also a new type, you know, because they, and they say the new types are psychic you know like they they kind of have that as almost a throwaway line but then it's like oh maybe that's actually something you know because there are moments where Amaro gets like this flash you know and he'll like look around and be like wait a minute something's over there you know so there's definitely something there and apparently Sela has it too uh apparently they got that out of uh her fumbling the Gundam the first time but I I guess I mean, I guess it's a thing of, like, well, imagine if Frau was in there. Like, she wouldn't even be able to fumble as good as uh, Sayla did. So, I don't know. But it was it was good enough. I mean, but they do also say, like... Because you know, Matilda also said, like, we're, we're really trying to give you the out that you're a new type... Because otherwise you'd be basically reprimanded for uh, for commandeering the Gundam. So, 
So it could be, it's like, it, it's kind of half and half, I guess. Is she a new type? Is she not? I still think Kai might be. I think they left that open enough to where he might be. But I don't know. But I mean, it's, it's also one of those things with the whole idea of a new type. That's also where I kind of look at this like, oh, it is kind of like Star Wars, you know? It's like Luke Skywalker, you know turn off your targeting system you can make the shot if you trust in the force and stuff that's kind of what i'm getting out of uh the new types almost but um but at the same time it's entirely possible that it's just a bunch of malarkey you know like it could totally be that it's like well it's like oh well what explains amuro being able to use the gundam so well it's like is a prodigy he was an engineer anyway like it could now i know being an engineer doesn't necessarily mean you're an incredible pilot but something i don't know like the it doesn't have to be like he's an evolved human with psychic powers or something it's like i don't know maybe he's just good you don't know but that's the thing is they're leaving it very open you know like they're not sure if new types are even a thing and if Amaro and Sela are new types, you know? So So yeah. Um I did like the whole thing with Mira, uh this civilian spy. I mean it makes sense that it's like, yeah, she's just trying to trying to get by. Now the whole thing, I will say, that that one moment where they where her sister says, "Oh, you smell like mom." And she's like, "Oh, I didn't mean to bring up that sort of emotion and stuff. I mean, that just leads me to believe, oh, is she actually their mother? I don't know, but I don't know. Uh, could be, could be, could not be, but uh, I guess they kind of leave that open. But again, that's just kind of where my mind goes when she says, when they drop a line like that. Um, it's interesting. They have to kind of drive home. That it's like, no, 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 the kids will be fine. They can take care of themselves. Like, they kind of have to say that because it's like, well, we can't just, like, go back and get them, and now they're a part of the crew and stuff like that, so, I don't know. Maybe Kai will go find them after the war's over, but, but, yeah. Uh, but that was good, and I like uh, Mira, you know, basically seeing the consequences of her actions, you know, even though she was technically doing it with good intentions of trying to uh, help her family uh still it led to terrible consequences for uh for white base so she felt bad about it so i like that uh i love the talk with captain woody uh i i do like you know amuro's realization like oh yeah matilda she was already she was already taken she had a fiance but i like how it it, it kind of is the 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 levi thing from the attack on titan ovas it's like, no, you have to make your choices and live with no regrets, you know? Because there was that moment, you know, where Amur is just sort of standing there in the Gundam. He's like, you know, why am I fighting and stuff? And it's like, I don't know why you're fighting, but you, you gotta fight. Like, you're you're kind of a sitting duck out there and people are getting shot. So, so I like how Woody's, you know, Captain Woody is like, no, you know, you need to give it, give it your best out there and live with no regrets, you know? And that's the thing. I, I like how he says, you know, it's like, oh, well, if I had been a better pilot, maybe she, you know, she'd still be alive. And he's like, you think too highly of yourself, you know? Like, that's not how this works. So. Um, and then we had the kids. Uh, honestly, this is kind of. I, I will say, I feel like this movie in particular kind of lost the importance of Frau. Like, she, I mean, she had some moments, but I feel like m half of the movie, she was just chasing those kids, and it's like, okay, I kind of wanted a bit more. I, I do like, at least, that with Sela going in the core fighter, that Frau took over her job. I'm at least glad for that, because it gives Frau something to do, you know? But I want her to have something to do. She's a, 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 to me, she's an important character, and I want her to do more than just chase the kids around, but here we are. Uh, but the kids, they did find the bombs uh, and save the the Gundams that went on to do nothing against Char. So, but hey, they saved them, so that was something. Um, and yeah, it's one of those things of like you can't just drop those kids off and be like, well, that's that's it. You know, you guys go off. It's like they're they're already too far into it, man. So, and then we did round out this this movie with Amuro versus Char round. 
four? I don't know. But again, I do just love that uh, that Char got a new mobile suit, but he specifically had it painted red. Like, he literally paints himself as a target, but he is so good that it doesn't actually matter, you know? So, that was really good. I enjoyed that. Um, and yeah, just a good uh, rematch between the two of them. Um, and yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. I guess, you know, you know, we've got more stuff, obviously, in the next movie. We're heading back into space. I assume, I assume the story's gonna wrap up in the next movie. I assume that's how that goes. I actually don't know. See, I know there's a, a show right now. It's like Mobile Suit Gundam The Witch from Mercury or something. I've seen a little bit. Like, I haven't watched it, but I, but I know it exists. Um... So, I don't, but I don't think that has anything, like, I kind of looked at it, like, a little plot synopsis, and I don't think that has Amuro, like, it's just a new Mobile Suit Gundam story, and that's fine, but it honestly makes me wonder if, you know, these three movies in this anime series, if this just is, this is it, this is the story of Amuro Ray and, you know, the white base and all the people on it, and if there's more Gundam stuff, it's all new stuff, I, I... See, there's a part of me that's like, well, it would be kind of cool to keep going after this with more of Amuro. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, I'm okay if, if his story just kind of ends here, you know? If he has a good three-movie story, and the rest of them all have good three-movie stories. So, so yeah, we will have to see. We will definitely have to see. Um, and yeah, I guess our big question, I guess, going into the next movie is, will Sela turn to the Xeon side uh, and join her brother. I don't think so, and I don't hope so, but I guess it's kind of open. Also, what the hell is the new type? Are new types real? Or is this just some shit they're making up? I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess that's pretty much that. And again, I don't know when the third movie reaction is going to be out. I'm going to try to film it uh, a, week after I, a week after this. But, yeah. Stay on the lookout. Stay subscribed, I guess hit the bell uh, so that you'll get a notification when I do that. But yeah, that is basically it. With all that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around any of those. There's a playlist for all of my Mobile Suit Gundam reactions, as well as another playlist for all of my movie reactions if you want to go check out more of those. There's also a subscribe button and a Patreon button on screen, as well as other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. See you guys later.